I don't know one woman who doesn't have a complicated relationship with food. So I will often say when I'm training, you know, your body is a celebration of what it can do, not as a punishment for what you ate. If you choose a glass of wine and the bag of Doritos, don't expect to look like a fitness model. Because women, we feel like it's either black or white, it's right or wrong, and if we're doing something, we need to do it perfectly and the same all the time. When you get to that place of acceptance, it's also you have to accept and love your body exactly. 100%. Welcome to the Living Rich Lead Podcast. We are back with another incredible episode. At least we think it's incredible and we think you will too. We are talking about fitness and nutrition as Woo-hoo. part of our Real Women, Real Talk edition. So let's just jump right into it because okay. we never waste any time. <laughs> we never do. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. Uh, let's kick it off by talking about um, some personal challenges. So if you think about your fitness and nutrition lifestyle yeah. as you kind of went from your 20s now into your 40s, uh, what are some personal challenges that you faced in uh, maintaining that routine? <laughs> yeah, there's like like everything. <laughs> Like, it's only a 45 minute show, right? Oh my God. Like, I don't <laughs> we even can talk about this. No, long. but I mean, you think yeah. about from injuries to all of it. And I think like if I'm going to sum it up, I think the the biggest challenge for me is is always my head. It's yeah. the mental game. It's that, you know, I'm on a journey to, and we've talked about this before, but I'm on a journey to loving my body. I think I can say today comfortably, I like my body. I'm nowhere near at the, I love it. Um, I appreciate my body for different things now, like mobility, being able to walk, being able to pick something up your twenties, what you're just, you assume you can do all that. So I think for me, that's really the evolution, but it's that mind body connection. And I think for women, there's so much pressure on the external, how your body looks, what's its shape, how, and, and now I'm more focused on, am I healthy? Uh, thanking my body for, you know, getting me from point A to point B that I'm healthy enough that I can be on this podcast today. So I think that journey has just been um, more of that mental piece yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's interesting how it evolves over time right? because when we're in our teens and in our 20s um, and just a, a sidebar, we did that episode on self-love, body dysmorphia, yeah. which if you haven't um, uh, watched that yet, definitely do check that out because that that got some great feedback. But as you move through your 20s, you know, your focus is more, um, you know, what size jean shorts are you wearing versus now, to your point, healthy enough to be on the podcast. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, myself included, dealing with aging parents and kind of watching that, you know, progress and yeah. wanting to be able to take care of ourselves as well. I think for this one, we've we've kind of split it up into five different kind of segments that we thought would be of value to people. Um, and we'll jump right into the first one, which is strength training and sustenance. Now, I I hear a lot about that working in the fitness industry and in the gym space around strength training, especially uh, women as they move through their 30s, 40s, 50s and whatnot. Um, so if we talk about strength training, specifically around bone health, yeah. Um, yeah. let's just kind of dive into that around yeah. you know, the importance of that and why do we do that? Yeah. And I like I love strength training. It's yeah. probably my favorite thing to do when it comes to fitness. Um, there's something about lifting weights that I absolutely love. Um, and not just because it, it's good for your for your bone density, because it's it's just for me, that's my feel good. Yeah. Um but it is good for your bone density, right? So you want that that strength. And I, I want to quote this, right? Yes. So we know that regular strength training for the average woman can increase your bone density 2% each year, right? And so that's diminishing your risk of osteoporosis, yeah. osteopenia, which my mom has, which is the precursor actually to osteoporosis. Um, and then when you're postmenopausal, though, this one blew me away is that if you strength train twice a week, it can increase your bone density by 9%. It's wild. Year. And it's wild. And so that is you want to keep your bones strong, right? Yeah. So you can you can live healthy. For me, that's like just one of many reasons that strength training is so important yeah. for women. Yeah. Uh, my mom is same thing. She goes for a bone density yeah. test every year. Same. And it's interesting seeing her in her 70s now. And, you know, the focus of 
keeping her bones healthy. Because as we age, you know, and we hear it all the time, people who fall, you know, don't necessarily recover, right. you know, broken hips, broken joints, right? Um, and so that whole strength training piece, you know, we know it's important, but why is it important? Um, it stimulates that bone remodeling process mm. and and it's applying stress to the bones, but stress in a good way because, you know, stress isn't always bad. Um, but that then encourages the body to be able to build denser bones as well as the bone tissue that surrounds it and the cartilage around the joints. Um, and then the muscle mass imbalance. I will say I hear this often from mm-hmm. women is I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to bulk up and I don't want to look like a man. So yep. for every woman listening to this, lift heavy shit You don't have testosterone, so you're not going to look like a man unless you are, you know, jacked up on roids or whatever. Um, But the whole muscle mass and balance piece um, falls, uh, fractures, all of that kind of stuff and functional mobility. And we think like, well, what's functional mobility? Well, all of the things that you do day to day uh, in your body, lifting, pushing, pulling, right. All of that kind of stuff. So if we, if we kind of relate that to our metabolism, right. Cause as women in our forties, you know, our metabolism kind of goes down the, I don't know the what you tubes. <laughs> I have no idea what you're Sorry. talking about. Wendy. Oh, we are balls of energy. My metabolism is revving 120% every day. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but metabolism, your metabolism plateaus. So when you're strength training, that that muscle tissue that you're burning and that you're developing uh, burns more calories. And so we're not talking about calories and numbers and, and that kind of stuff, but uh, compared to uh, calories at rest yep. uh, to your fat tissue. So maintaining or increasing that muscle mass, it boosts your metabolic rate. So I like using the example of think of your body as like a wood burning stove. Every couple of hours, you put wood in your fire mm-hmm, uh, to mm-hmm. keep your fire going so that your fire doesn't die. That's literally what your body is, a wood-burning stove. Yeah. Um, so being able to really be able to develop and lift weights, build that muscle tissue, that's exactly what it does for your metabolism. Yeah. And I think to your point, like you, so many women are scared of lifting weights. Yes. I think it's shifting more. Yeah. I see more and more women um, in the gym who feel, you know, pretty confident mm-hmm. in that, but it it really for so long felt like a, you know, women were taught to what, like you're doing always 12 to 15 reps. And it's always like that. I'm thinking back to old school and like yep. weight. And um, I remember the first time I started lifting heavier and I was like, oh, this is phenomenal. You get great results without like, to your point, bulking yeah. out. Your frame is your frame. Right. Like that's not going to change. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think too, you talked about this, but as we age, um, you know, if we're losing muscle mass, it, that, just in itself will slow down our metabolism. So we want to maintain that muscle mass to keep our metabolism even at some sort of consistent level. So strength training across the board is is great for women, but it's also, I think, as we're in that sort of perimenopausal menopausal stage, it, it's almost like a, a, a really important, crucial piece of yeah. your workout yeah. or fitness regime. 100%. Yeah. But it, it's interesting how women, we come from the background of cardio, cardio, cardio. Yeah. <laughs> and when I went through my transformation, yeah. which I talked about in my episode, uh, and you can see my before and after pictures on my website at thereallife.ca, but people will say, so how often did you work out to get stage ready before you competed? And it was 80% weights, mm-hmm. actually uh, closer to 90% weights, 10 to 15% cardio. My coach had me doing hardly any cardio. And I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to lean out. I'm never going to, my body fat's never going to drop down. And it was almost all strength training three times a week. But you look at transformation, sometimes you think, oh my God, they must be doing that seven days a week. So it's not about how often you're doing it. It's not about the uh, quantity, but it's about yeah. the quality of what you're doing. 100%. Focusing more on the, um, on on uh, weights instead of cardio. Yeah, 100%. And I think you're seeing that shift more and more yeah. Um, yeah. across the board. Totally. Yeah. So daily function, daily functionality. Yeah. So I notice this, especially simple things like getting out of bed in the morning, right? Where you're kind of achy and creaky a little bit more. Um, we talked about that. I mean, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I fly out of bed in the morning. 
I do not. <laughs> I I do not fly at all. No. I, it's like it's like a it's like a roll. I'm slowly rolling over, and I'm like my back hurts, my hip hurts, and I am sitting. And so it's, Rob and I laugh about that all the time because he rolls on uh, one side, I roll on the other. I'm yeah. like, and we're up. It's like, and then we get to our feet, we kind of like stumble a little bit. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, I get to get out of bed yeah. this morning. <laughs> That's where I start. Which, in all joking aside, is, is right exactly. Exactly. I love the get too much. Yeah. Um, so if we talk about reducing uh, risk, falls, functional yes. functionality, all of that kind of stuff, I use this a lot when I'm training and coaching. So balance, stability, uh, functional mobility, all of those functional episode, um, exercises that mimic all of that stuff. And like I said, I see it in my parents, right? So when you think about basic squats, that helps you with sitting, standing, picking objects up uh, off the floor, lunges, you know, another very functional basic exercise, you know, walking, climbing stairs, uh, deadlifts, picking up heavy shit from the floor like I you know I see I see my parents doing it right and and my mom especially because she she takes really good care of herself being able to do that kind of stuff yeah. uh, push-ups for that upper body strength and for women that's one of our weakest muscle groups is our upper body but being able to push open a door get up off of the floor you think about falling down right you know getting up off the floor you need that upper body strength um planks you know any kind of core work you know core uh functional strength which is the backbone for for all of that but all of those those things are they're easy in terms of being able to do them but we don't necessarily do enough of them i couldn't agree more i know um like I'm, my mom i'm my mom's almost 80 so she's 79 and she still lifts weights that's amazing yeah like three times a week and she's super active and i'm like like she's a physio so understands the importance obviously yeah. um of still lifting weights not heavy weights but she's still lifting yeah. lifting weights and i remember one of the and she has a, a bad hip so that's starting to you know at some point we'll need a hip replacement and i was watching and we talked about this before on the show but the blue zone um, yes. so it was really cool on Netflix, but they, what they found, you know, in those communities, it was like setting, um, why do, why are there pockets of people across the world in various countries that live longer? Yeah. And one of the core elements of that was movement, right? So what they ate movement community, yeah. but the movement, so much of it was exactly what you just talked about really basic things like being able to crouch down. So they're gardening. Yes. So you're in that position, being able to crouch down and get back up. If you're not doing that on a regular basis, that's that's when you start to stiffen. And those are the, the regular movements that we want, Absolutely. right? Until we're, yep. until we're in our 90s. And it's interesting how when we talk, and we're going to talk a bit about movement later, but what what is movement, right? It's about, you know, for me, I know when I'm 90, I want to be able to bend down. Yeah. Like I want to be able to bend down and pick something up and not totally. be like, oh, my back hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you think about from a family perspective, there's so many people uh, and so many women as, as our goals start to shift more from what size clothing I'm wearing to, I want to be able to get down on the floor and play with my grandkids. I want to be able to pick them up and lift them into their car seat, go down water slides, like whatever. That just becomes a whole new level of enhancing your quality of life. 100%. Um, Now, one thing I get asked often is I want to lift weights, but I'm super intimidated. I don't know where to start. There's so much on the, so much online. So, you know, um, how women can start lifting weights. Um, I think it's about finding a place that you are comfortable with mm-hmm. and that's different for everyone. It sure is. Some people thrive in a group fitness setting. Yeah. Now I, I coach at Orange Theory, so we have group fitness, but it's in a smaller setting yeah. with one-on-one personal training that's included. So people aren't paying for a personal trainer, but they get the best of both worlds where they've got Amazing. that community, but then they've got that personal training. Yeah. For some people, they like doing it on their own. Yeah. Um, other people, it's one-on-one. So um, do you have any? Yeah. For me, like I'm one of those loners. I love to work out by myself. Yeah. Um, although I will say recently, in, like Eric and I started going to the gym together and working nice. out together and I love love that. And that's yeah. new for me. Good. It's always been a very individual, like head down, headphones on. I'm music. Like that's almost like my meditation time yes. for me. Um, I have friends who like absolutely need a gym buddy. Like they can't, they won't go to the gym unless they go with somebody. Yeah. Um, so I think what you said is just find somebody and be okay with not knowing it's okay that you don't know what you're doing. No one's expecting you. Like, I think there's so much pressure. If you think of a gym environment, there's so much pressure and people look around and they're, they're doing that like comparison game. And they're like, I have no idea what 
I'm doing, yeah. right? And it's okay to not know what you're doing. So grab a friend and go, go on your own. I highly encourage everyone, if you're going to a gym, get a personal trainer. And it doesn't yes. have to be for the whole, nope. like the rest of your life, but a few sessions, just so you understand yes. the equipment, you understand what kind of level of weight, even how to, even if you're with a free weight, what are some exercises, um, your positioning, that's not the word, but you know what I mean? Like what's your form? Like all of that matters. And I think if you're able to, then I would encourage that. Also online, there's a ton of stuff. Yes. You just have to really... If that's what motivates you and you're not comfortable going in gym, do it at home. But just, I think to your point, it's try something until it sticks right. and then and then stick with it yeah. is the key. Yeah. And I would say don't overthink it. A lot of times, especially as women, we get ready to get ready. Oh, I'm going to buy my new workout clothes first. And I... <laughs> What? What? <laughs> I then I'm going to buy my gym shoes. Then I'm going to, you know, research whatever. And then one thing that you often say, Kate, in a lot of our podcasts is just start. Start. And I love that. I really love that. Yeah. Uh, a tip on personal trainers, find someone that matches your personality, yeah. but also look for somebody that's just starting their PT business. Mm. So apprentices, that kind of stuff who are looking to build their clientele because their rates are usually lower than... That's a great uh, tip. Yeah. And that it'll still give... Um, people that one-on-one -on -one opportunity yeah. where they're spending it like to your point, a couple of sessions so that you know what you're doing. I love that. Because there's nothing more intimidating than going into a gym as a woman and you've got all of your, sorry, I'm not trying to classify all the men, but all of the meatheads, all of them, yeah. you know, like, yeah. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do it? <laughs> Right. That, know. you know, the, and it's very intimidating. So yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I just, uh, my, one of my kids, I is just signed up for a good life. One of my boys. And so I just took him to the gym. Gym, we did the whole walkthrough yes. and I like it's when you're 14 it's really intimidating absolutely like and I was intimidated and I'm like I'm like are you good do you want to do the personal he's like no I'm gonna figure it out I'm like okay and I'm like it's just as the mom and me just wanted to like I just I'm like I'll come with you yeah. I'll show you the machines and he's like, and the kids are uh, like uh, I don't think so no <laughs> like, no you think that's do you gonna need help no <laughs> it's also like mom you can't just go with me around the gym you're killing my vibe I was like okay right mom I'm okay. not I'm not cool anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like broke oh. my heart. But yeah. So. Uh, but good for him though. Uh, Cause I, a lot of gyms and for yeah. parents out there are moms who are looking to get their kids more active. Uh, and I think it's great that he's open to that. There's a lot of gyms. I know good life in, good in life particular, it, yeah. they have a summer um, and it's free program, for teens, yeah, which, which is, is great, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So look around lots of stuff. Uh, let's kind of dive into nutrition. So mm -hmm. this is we do a whole episode on well, this actually. one, but um, talking a little bit about what our journey with nutrition has been like <laughs> as we age. So uh, me, <laughs> where do we begin? Oh, it's so complicated. It's layered. And I think, um, you know, we always talk very openly on the show. I don't know one woman who doesn't have a complicated relationship mm -hmm. with food. I just don't. Um, from eating disorders to um, just restricting what they eat mm -hmm. to uh, obsessing over what they eat. I don't know anybody who hasn't struggled with it. And that's that speaks volumes to me. Yeah. Um, my own personal journey is like very different. It used to be like strict intake, counting calories, you know, wanting to be waif thin. That's what it was in my day. Like so much pressure around looking a certain way. So I, it, early, that's just what not a not a healthy relationship yeah. with food. Like food was the enemy. That's like to me, food was not fuel, which it is for me today. Yes. So the big difference for me is now I see it as a as a way to fuel my body. That being said, you talk to any of my girlfriends and they all joke about how poor my diet is. And I'm fully aware of that. So I'm like, a, I won't eat till like one. I don't eat in the morning. I'm not. This is not. Please don't follow what I do. <laughs> What I do. Please don't follow me. <laughs> but I like and I eat like I honestly eat like a five year old. Like I'll have lunch meat and crackers. And yep. if I'm lucky I might have, you know, two carrots on the side. Lunchable box. Oh my like literally they used to make fun of me at work. <laughs> They're like, Oh my, did you pack it for your kid and they forgot it? So you took it? I'm like, No, this is my lunch. It's my crackers. It's like it's actually my little hilarious. cheese cute. My cheese cut into oh, stars. It's, it's so like I'm not a not a huge fruits and veggie person. So I take a lot of supplements because of that. Yeah. But I've just like 
I'm now starting, I think, finally to be like fuel. You have to fuel your body. I finally have appetite for understanding what foods my body reacts well to. I think to figuring out my gluten intolerance has really helped me to be like, oh, why is my stomach so off? Yeah. So it's a journey for me. It's yeah. never been overly healthy but I'm really excited about where I'm going and wanting to understand more about food and its impact on me yeah. and my gut health, which for me is also, well, for everyone is linked to brain, right? Yes. So, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. And when I coach um, through the real life, that's one of the top things that women say is I've had an unhealthy, had, have yeah. um, an unhealthy relationship with food, very much on and off. One big thing that I hear often is the feeling of guilt and needing to punish themselves yeah. to work off whatever. So I will often say when I'm training, you know, your body is a celebration of what it can do, not as a punishment for what you ate, which that that's easy to say, but that comes with a lot of mindset work around yes. using food as fuel. Yeah. Um, but I have also struggled with that same journey as well. And it has varied depending on my stage in life. I've yeah. gone from, you know, yeah. typical teenager, unhealthy habits, you know, eating out at the mall or whatever, doing all the things um, to being obese, to having disordered eating, um, but learning to love myself and take care of myself. And I'm still on a a journey, right? I, I don't even think that ever ends. No. But if we talk about some key nutritional tips, now I will start off by saying a lot of this stuff. So here's the thing. We know what to eat. <laughs> like we know what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat. So that's not, but for a lot of people, it's just um, small tips. So even if people are just taking away one thing that we're sharing today, then I feel like we've done a service to yeah. helping people. Well, right? I hope so. I think like it's, you know, what I think is important, and if I'm going to give one tip, and it's the one tip that really helped me is when I was very like rigid in my, you know, my fitness routine and, and what I was eating and my regimen is if I, you know, one day went out for dinner and it was a family dinner and I ate more than I was supposed to eat that day based off my nutritional program. I, the, what you just talked about was that game in my head of yes. beating myself up. Like, why did you do that? Why didn't you order this? What were you thinking? And the whole, like, remember the whole time you're, I, I'm at that dinner, the, I'm looking at the menu stress. Like it's this whole experience right. of being like, oh, don't eat that. Why would you eat that? What's wrong with you? Now you ate it. Now you're going to be fat. Now you're going to go to the gym tour. Like that is a real dialogue that a lot of women have. Yes. Um, and I think it's, you're, you're not always going to hit it a hundred percent. Yeah. So when you fall off the horse, if you want to call it that, just get back up, like just stop the beating yourself up about it. And just tomorrow. Great. Like nothing, it's not going to affect your journey in no. any way. Yeah. Um, but we take so much energy and focus it into that negative self-talk and we punish ourselves over and over again, yeah. where if we just parked that and just got up the next day and just started doing where you were without that negative, I think like yeah. that would be my my tip. I, w I wish I could have done that when I was younger. Right. But you're doing it now. I'm totally right? doing it now. And I think that that comes, so I guarantee people are listening and thinking, yeah. well, it's easy for you guys to say because whatever, whatever. Yeah. But I think like the work that we do um, in complement, so your get to mindset, yeah. because everything you just described all comes down to mindset. You can't fix no. this without fixing this, right? So your get to mindset. When I'm coaching, I do so much accountability coaching around working on strategies, mindset, um, creating that positive influence where people are able to start navigating away from the um, I I should, yeah. why did I, all of this kind of stuff to learning how to celebrate where they are because it's it, it's it's easy to say and it's mm -hmm. easy to do but it's easier not to do and to your point on falling you fall off get back up I've said this before but it's like you get a flat tire yeah you're not gonna then just say fuck it and slash the other three you deal with the one flat tire yeah and, and 
You yeah. Know, one bad day yeah. Yeah. isn't, and we all totally. fall into this notorious, oh, it's, you know, I was good, yeah. whatever good is, whatever that is, on Monday and Tuesday. By the time Wednesday comes around, I'm bad. Yeah. So fuck it. I'm going to just, I'll restart again on Monday. There's always a restart date, right? But yeah. that's when you, that cycle, that hamster wheel of on again, off again, it all comes down to really finding, um, program, nutrition, fit, whatever yeah. is going to work with you and whatever is going to be, whatever you can be consistent. Well, with. and I like how you talk about the mental part in there because it is so, um, it's so important to understand too, like part of that, you know, your fitness journey, your relationship with food journey, as you get older, there's, it, it does shift, yes. but there's also like a part of me now that is like, okay, I want to enjoy my glass of wine and have a bag of Doritos tonight. So I'm going to do that. And I'm now at a, at, oh <laughs> it's God, actually love, very frequent that Doritos. that happens. But it's is it like, like, are they cheese Doritos or are they no, cool the ranch? Nacho, no, nacho, the okay, nacho. The real, the, the OGs. Oh my God, like the OGs, my favorite. But, but I'm now in a headspace where I do that. I don't punish myself, but yep. I, I want to be really honest that comes with my body looking differently. And I think what we don't talk about enough is that kind of link where it's like, if you choose a glass of wine and the bag of Doritos, don't expect to look like a fitness model. Like there's balance, right, about being healthy. Mm -hmm. And it's not always about looking like perfect on the outside, taking care of your body. Yes, it matters. I don't encourage a glass of wine and a bag of Doritos every night. However, when you need that for for your head, totally. right, then you you do it. But I, I think it's important to understand sometimes um, we want that, right? We want the Doritos and wine and we want to look like a fitness model. And th those two will never live never. in the same world. Yep. So when you get to that place of acceptance, it's also you have to accept and love your body exactly how 100%. it is. Yeah. Well, and I so you need to choose or, yes. you know lifestyle or yeah. life sentence that's right now i'm not saying that fitness models uh it's a life sentence for them yeah i will say though having gone through that journey yeah. of training being very regimented with diet to be able to step on stage mm -hmm. where the expectation is your body fat is as low as possible all of that that is that is not a lifestyle in my opinion that's not something you can maintain so i will often say to women you know let's choose your hard lifestyle or life sentence. And sometimes it's a balance yeah, of both, right? Yeah, so nutrient dense foods. I mean, again, we know what we should be eating, what we shouldn't be eating, but protein and finding the right protein. A lot of now for a lot of people, you know, they're like, Oh, I can't get enough protein. Well, you're not going to sit and slam back 12 chicken breasts. Maybe you are, yeah. but <laughs> the, the body can only consume and, and, yeah. and absorb so much, yeah. but find the right protein. Uh, especially yeah. if you're using a protein powder, yeah. um, powder, I should say balanced meals in a busy schedule, meal prep. I hear this often from yeah. people. I don't have time. I don't want to, but all of those things, batch prep. So taking an hour on Sundays, we all have an hour guaranteed. We all spend an hour scrolling on our phones totally guaranteed so batch prep freezer meals sheet pan meals yep. um we've used meal services before hello fresh and while people think they're expensive when you think about your time and your prep it's it, it saves so much you're probably spending maybe 20 bucks more if that yeah. than picking everything up at the grocery store it's excuse wild. me but it's that wild. has that has helped us out a lot and then i will say cleansing um at the cellular level. So supported intermittent fasting works very well for people. Your body was not designed to, to handle the level of toxicity that like a lot of people say, well, your liver cleanses, you know, absolutely it does. But you look back to 20, 30 years ago, your body and our environment, right. all of the toxicity, our bodies were not designed to do that. So uh, when I coach, I will often coach women um, with the nutritional products that we use, um, cleansing at a cellular level. So reducing yeah. the inflammation from yeah. your organs, your joints, targeting the visceral fat, where you're keeping that body um in that semi-fasting state, not for a long period of time, yeah. but enough to help reduce that inflammation um, can be very helpful. Yeah, I agree with all that. I think um, too, just to help, we talked about metabolism, but yes. and you talked about protein and protein so important for that piece. I yeah. like most women don't eat enough protein in their day. Um, and I remember when I was was counting everything, trying to get all that protein was mm -hmm. hard. It I is found, hard. Yeah. I found it really hard. Um, and there's lots of, you know, protein powders and you throw it in a smoothie. Now there's a lot more um, options. Um, I'm on to like Quest protein chips, which I love. So it gives me like, and I actually discovered 
those and I'm not Quest is not sponsoring this podcast, by the way. It's just one of my favorites. But yeah. then and uh for me when I cut out gluten, I miss like crackers and crunch. Yes. And so like that was a great one that I oh my gosh, did you say <laughs> If for those who are listening, the uh, microphone just attacked me. It didn't. I actually bumped right into it. Anyway, <laughs> right through. Oh, happy recording day. Um, what was I saying? No, I'm kidding. So <laughs> Quest yeah. chips, but those, I because those sound delicious. They're so good, and I and there's 20 grams of protein in a small bag. So you know, the day you don't want to have the wine and Doritos, I'm having Quest in a glass yep. of water. So, but yeah. similar sort of experience, mind body experience for yeah. me. But I yeah. think I think people are always looking for those. Um, types of products yeah. and nutritional things that they can incorporate. We use Isogenics. Again, Isogenics isn't sponsoring this, but we've been using it for over a decade. Yeah. Um, and when you talk about chips, they have something similar yeah. where they are gluten-free, soy-free, all of that kind of stuff, but you're getting 20 grams of protein. Same thing. Per, right? It's yep. the same thing. Love that. Uh, if we talk a little bit about um, mental and emotional well-being, we won't spend like too much time on this because we one of our episodes that we did on Real Women Real Talk was around that mental mind Absolutely. piece. Absolutely. And uh, if you haven't listened to it, make sure you go back and um, and listen to it. But mental and emotional well-being just around that mind body connection. And I hear often in order to get fit, I need to be like running or doing HIIT training or, you know, um, you know, doing something really hardcore several times a week. Never underestimate the power of walking or yoga, things like that. I look at my mom and she is in her uh, heading into her late seventies. She has belonged to the walk club at the mall. I love that for years. And they walk. They're getting their walking in, but they've also they also get that community and that connection together. She does yoga. She swims. So all of those lower impact activities that really connect your mind to reducing anxiety and depression. It releases those endorphins. Yeah. Um, stress of any kind spikes up your cortisol levels. Right. Uh, super high. So carving out time for those coping strategies to be able to lower your stress hormone while still moving, because movement is movement, uh, doesn't mean you need to get your sweat on or your heart rate up every single time. Uh, but stretching, breathing, meditating, you know, all of the things that you do with the get to yeah. mindset around that mind body connection. Yeah, that calm is so important. And I know um, for me, when I work out, I'm always mentally clear. I yeah. always feel better after. It's sometimes hard to roll out of bed and, and start, but the second I'm done, I, I feel better. I yeah. feel lighter I, and I do get mental clarity from it. So yeah. for me, like um, the physical actual workout itself improves my mental health. And we we know there's a connection there. Yeah. Um, and I know for me, um, definitely my meditation is like something I love. Um, and setting my day off right with meditation for me also calms me. Yeah. And there's times where I do both. I will meditate and work out. There's times where I'm like, I can do one or the other and I might choose a mindset piece. Today, I'm like, I'm feeling really stressed. So I, I'm going to sit and meditate. And yeah. other times, you know, honestly, if I'm feeling like anxious or I'm just feeling really like, I don't know, like angry or yeah. I'm bothered, something happened, I'll work out. Yeah. Because for me, that helps get that kind of like the energy, that kind of negative energy yeah. out of my body. Well, and I love that point that you brought up because I feel like as women, we feel like it's either black or white, it's right or wrong. And if we're doing something, we need to do it perfectly and the same all the time. So the fact that you get up in the morning and you listen to and you have that check in with yourself, how am I feeling today? Yeah. Um, um, I think is huge. I'm coaching a woman right now and she really struggles with diving right into her day. She's a business owner and she's always so that there is no mind body connection at all. Mm. And we talked about exactly what you just said, like doesn't have to be journaling every day, meditating every no. day, movement. every. Find something in terms of how do you feel? Give yourself that 10 seconds, sit for 10 seconds. How do I feel? What do I feel connected with? And then find something that's yeah. going to be able to uh, steer you in that direction that's going to bring you to where you need to yeah. be. Yeah. And what do I need today? So I yes. relate to that being like a business owner and waking up and feeling like it takes everything in me to not roll over and check my email first thing in the morning. And yeah. so it is, it is very much, um, what do I need today? 
And I think that's a great way of looking at it. It's like, what do I need today? Oh, today I have like, I'm in meetings all day. If I don't do this piece of work, I'm going to be super stressed out Mm -hmm. for the rest of the day. So I'm going to get up and I'm going to work this morning. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to do this morning. There are other mornings I wake up and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I just like I didn't sleep well. I'm not feeling great. I'm going to do a meditation. I just want to get my head straight for the day. There's other days I wake up and I'm like, I'm feeling stiff. I'm going to work it. Whatever that is. But to your point, it it doesn't have to be so rigid. Right. And it's almost like when we're raising our kids, like we would never speak to our kids the way we speak to ourselves sometimes around like if your kids are, how how do you feel today? Mm -hmm. You know, and we would give them options, yeah. but for some reason we don't give ourselves. <laughs> I wonder why we don't give ourselves <laughs> options. But when we speak about activity and just staying active and movement and 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 what that means and what that can look like, if you were to think about the word active, what does that mean to you today? Yeah, very different. So active to me is movement now, um, and it doesn't have to be high intensity, low intensity. I don't care what it is. It's movement. Yeah. So in COVID, for the very first time, I experienced well, me alone, the whole world experience. But I didn't move, so I would literally get up in the morning, go to my computer, and sit and and sit there all day. And sometimes, depending on what was happening, I could sit there for twelve hours in a day. Yeah. And I would literally get up from my chair go to the kitchen, get something to eat and come back to that chair. And then at the end of the day, this is like when I didn't have children and we were all in isolation, I would then go move to the couch and watch TV. So I literally did not, I probably took, I can't even imagine if I had a step counter on my watch, what it would have said. And because of that, um, and because I always sit cross-legged and crooked because of a bad uh, injury I had years ago, I'm not straight. So I sit crooked and it just, it attacked me again. (laughs) <laughs> it's I'll just share with our viewers. I'm just going to share this because I think it's worth sharing. I'm wearing my glasses for the very first time. <laughs> and because, uh, yeah, and it's throwing me off because it's actually for reading. And so I'm looking at Wendy, who's all fuzzy, and I actually can't see where my mic is in front of me. So anyone watching, that's what's happening. Um, but I became so immobile that everything locked up and I had to go to wow. physio and I spent months in physio just trying to get my mobility back. Oh. So f- so for me now, I'm yep. like, I have a sit-stand desk. I will not sit for too long, then I stand up. It's important to me, like, you've been in the same yeah. position for too long, just move, right? And that's like something my physio taught me was like, my mom's a physio, so same from her. Just it's not necessarily you're sitting wrong, you're sitting in the same position. Yeah. So you have to get up and move. And if that means just going for a walk sometimes, and it, it's a conscious decision for me to bring in more movement yeah. into my life. And learning to be intentional with it. Intentional. As silly as for some people putting a reminder on their phone. Like yeah, I need to, I need sure. to put a reminder on yeah. my phone because I will just get caught up in, oh my God, I've been doing this for an hour and it feels like it was just fine. Right. Yeah. So learning how to be intentional with getting up and moving. Yeah. I know. Um, right after I teach at the gym, a lot of people are like, okay, go, go, go. I got to go back to work. Uh, yeah. The email inbox is always full. Like, can we take three minutes just to cool the body down, bring the body back down to that neutral state, add in some of those stretching, especially when we're sitting during the day, right? Yes. Um, I know I've learned and I still am learning celebrating what I can do, not what I uh, think I should be doing. Yeah. So celebrating yeah. what I can do, especially after I've had a couple of major surgeries, hysterectomy, I just had foot surgery um, 10 weeks ago, Yeah. but learning to be able to, okay, so I don't have my foot to use or my leg yeah. um, and starting to feel the imbalance on my other leg. So what kind of things can I do? And I can still work up and it, you know, it really is a choice in how you look at it, meeting yourself where you're at and be really intentional about filling your own cup yeah. because the work is always going to be there. The shit's always going to be there. Um, Yeah. yeah. The expression I always say is your inbox will will be full when you're dead. Like it's just, it's always going to be full. Yeah. 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 And uh, we're so easily replaceable, but we've talked about that in other episodes as well, but it's so true, right? It's so So true. It is so, so true. So if we talk about um, some ideas around just low impact exercises, flexibility, mobility, that kind of stuff, like things that people could maybe think about. Yeah. I mean, I think there's lots. I'm, I'm 
embrace low impact now. So I used to run for years and that has done, I can't anymore. It just, it's not worth what come the pain that comes from that. So walking is great. Uh, Swimming is another great one. Biking, just anything where you're not getting that harshness on your joints. Um, And I think we have to take care of our joints as we get older in particular. And so there's so many sort of um, low impact exercise. You can even do like low impact aerobics. Like there are things that you can, there's so many options. Um, um, just Google it and you'll find a million one things. But I do think like finding uh, and and weaving more low impact into your into your routine as we get older is super important. Yeah. And it's about um, not forcing yourself to do something that you don't enjoy doing. I love people say all the time, oh, oh I wish I could run. I want to be a runner. I, I need to start running. You don't need to do anything. You need to find something. Maybe running works for one person, maybe biking or swimming. So find, because when we don't enjoy what we do, we can't be consistent with it. It's same with an eating plan. People will say to me all the time, like, what's the best eating plan? The best eating plan is something you can be consistent with. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it, but it's true, right? It's it could so be true. keto. It could be whatever, yeah. you know, um, any kind of different nutritional program, high protein, low, whatever. But where people don't see results, it's the same with fitness is they're always switching every yeah. every couple of weeks or every month. And then you're not seeing the benefits of anything and you're getting frustrated because you're always changing stuff up. Yeah. Um, flexibility and mobility. We just kind of talked about that. Yeah. But uh, being able to really um train your body as you get older to maintain that full range of motion and prevent um, stiffness. I will often post on my uh, Real Life with Wendy Facebook page, different stretches that people can do right at home. There's also a great resource and we'll link it in the show notes, but um, it's called Yoga. (laughs) Wow. We're on fire. We're on fire. (laughs) Yoga with Adrian. And she has a monthly calendar. It's completely free. It's on YouTube and it is a fabulous resource. So for people that are, you know, wanting to pay for extra stuff, we'll link that in the show notes as well. And then like, like we said, finding things that we enjoy. You have Um, to, you have to like it. Like if you don't like to golf, don't go golfing. If you don't like to run, don't go running because you're never going to show up for it. It's like, if you don't like mint chocolate chip ice cream, like I don't, like that's gross. Who, yeah, who would? Like I don't that? understand that. But anyways, if you're gonna <laughs> eat, like don't don't try and like it. You're never gonna like it if you don't like it. Like it's just I think like trying to force it into a box. Sometimes it's like hundred percent. We wanna, we really wanna like it. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. Um, just to to want to like something versus like really find what fills your boots. And that might mean you try kayaking, paddle boarding, running, soccer, gym, like. But find what really fuels you yeah. um, because it that does make it easier. You're more likely to go. You're more likely to do it and, and really sort of weave it into your life. Yeah, you're more likely to build that routine. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm still on the ice cream piece. Like <laughs> I recognize that this is all about... <laughs> You know, nutrition well, but so we've talked about Doritos and we've both agreed that like the not the the real nacho. nacho. But so I need to know what your favorite ice cream flavor is. Oh, okay. So I'm old school. Tell me. I'm a heavenly hash girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, yeah, okay, that's okay. I'm I'm a <laughs> That, yeah, we can still be friends. That, that that's a good one. I like What's that one. What's yours? Well, I'm a, I'm I'm like I like fruity things. I'm oh. not much of like I know. So black cherry. <gasps> it's like my f- least favorite. I don't know. I'm questioning our friendship. <laughs> <That's> why- <laughs> I'll tell you what. We'll share Doritos, but we won't. We'll have our own ice cream. Oh, but see, I like, actually prefer that because I'll just eat my whole tub of ice cream <laughs> very happily on my own. I don't want to share. <laughs> Follow us for more health and nutrition tips. But we laugh about it. And I think we can kind of tie this into as we start to wrap up building a strong support network for longevity. Um, We always have a great time together when we we laugh, we talk about things like this. And so that power of community finding people that you can relate to, that motivation, accountability, the emotional support, and really about uh, finding that sense of belonging with who your people are um, and showing up for yourself, showing up for your group, your community, uh, finding the right people in your circle who are going to cheer you on, but also want to do things with you and who holds you accountable, right? Like the people that if you set a walking date or you're going kayaking or you're going to the gym, uh, finding that person that's like, no, 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 come on, get up. Like we're going kind of thing where sometimes you just need that kick in the ass to be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah. Um, you, finding those people. Yeah. And I think too, you can find sometimes for for some people, there's online communities that you 
can embrace. There's like just that kind of hold you accountable. There's enough apps now that can help hold you accountable. Like I'm not the watch Apple watch person, but so many people love to count their steps or just even like it just helps kind of give you like if you don't have someone there, there's lots of sort of online communities or online tools you can leverage just to kind of help you, I guess, really just stick with it or maybe feel motivated. Yep. Yeah. At the end of the day. And to find people that like the same things as you. Yeah. You know, I mean, not knocking any social media app, but like it's fun and games to like scroll through Pinterest or TikTok. But are you being intentional with the time that you are using online to fall or to uh, find um, those groups? And part of it can also be around that accountability. Like we said earlier, we know what we should do and what we, I don't want to say shouldn't do, but we know what benefits us and what doesn't benefit us. But for a lot of people, it's finding somebody to be able to hold us accountable and to be able to literally hold our hand and guide. And that's why I started um, the real life because there was so many people who are like, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm just not doing it. And I'm having conversations in my head on, come on, just get it done. But I'm just, I'm stuck because I'm not moving the needle. So that's where I really started working on case. So let's just cut all the BS out. Let's yeah. figure out what's important to you. Let's build out step-by-step plans. Let's hold you accountable. Yeah. Like 150% accountable to where it is that you want to be uh, in any aspect, whether it's mindset, whether it's fitness, whether it's nutrition, like anything around that. Yeah. Um, and it's been, I'd like to think it's been game changing for some people. I Well, I mean, everything, you know, I read and hear from all of your clients is just phenomenal. And, and, you know, you're one of those great coaches who will hold people accountable, not in a like, like, you know, scolding way, but you hold them accountable. Like if you're going to show up and this is, you know, you have a goal, I'm going to hold you accountable. That's my, that's your role, right. And getting them there. So, so many great things. We'll link to, we'll link to real life too in the show notes for people to go check it out. Yeah. And I think like if, if I can leave with one thing, it's find what works for you. 100%. Like, I think you, we might have said it a million times today, but nutritionally, find what works for you. Fitness, find what works for you. There is no one size fits all. Yep. No, there's not. And I will say, Kate and I are obviously online. Uh, yeah. Reach out to us. Yeah. Uh, reach out to to me for, you know, fitness, nutrition, you know, advice, questions, that kind of stuff. Kate is phenomenal at mindset for people that are looking at building out more gratitude, intentionality. Yeah. So, and a lot of that stuff kind of interweaves. So never be shy in reaching out because guaranteed if one person has a question about it or yeah. not, right? Yeah. It, it, it's on everybody's mind often. So absolutely. Well, this was, this was good. This I think, was awesome. Uh, ice well, cream. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. As always, we encourage you to please like, share, or subscribe. Uh, you can also check out our website at livingrichly.me. Our Facebook group, The Living Richly Nation, is taking off and couldn't be more thrilled about what we're seeing um, across the Facebook group. So many great conversations. Oh, it's an amazing community. Loving it. It Fills Uh, my cup. My cup too, always. Um, And also you can then check us out uh, our 15 day life vision challenge, which is blowing up as well. And this is an amazing course. It's free. It's robust. It's going to help you map out a vision for where you want to take your life. So be sure to check it out. And until next time, get out there and continue living your best life.